Good morning and welcome to Zion Lutheran Church. Today, this weekend actually, we celebrate our Independence Day and we will begin our worship this morning with a prayer and a song for God's blessing on our nation. Thank you for joining us and we hope that you are blessed as you are blessing to us this day as we ponder the meaning of Jesus' uh, call to discipleship and Jesus offering us respite. <laughs> giving to God for the gift of liberty. Let us pray for the wisdom and desire that this freedom should be shared equally by all people. Lord of all the nations, by your spirit guide our people to go forth in justice, seeking freedom for all. Give, Give us what, what outward, outward prosperity may, may be your, your will. will. But, but above all, all things, things, give us faith in you, that our nation may bring glory to your name and blessings to all peoples. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen.
gather as the people of God. Today we gather as saints and sinners, freed from the weight and cost of our sin by God, through the gracious gift of Jesus Christ and salvation in Jesus Christ. We thank God for this precious gift that brings light and life to the world. Amen. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also with you. Kyrie eleison. Lord, have mercy. Christe eleison. Christ, have mercy. Kyrie eleison. Lord, have mercy. great, O God, and greatly to be praised. You have made us for yourself, and our hearts are restless until they rest in you. Grant that we may believe in you, call upon you, know you, and serve you. Through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Amen. Hi, boys and girls. Good morning, and happy Independence Day weekend. I hope that you had festivities and that you enjoyed the day yesterday and that you enjoy the day today. Hello from me and from Kia, and uh, we wish you God's peace. Today I want to talk to you about two words that Jesus uses in the gospel that might help us to understand what it is that Jesus, how our relationship with Jesus uh, can make things a little bit easier for us. Jesus says in the gospel, Come to me, you who are heavy burdened, and I will give you rest. Jesus talks about those who are weary. Those are words, again, that we don't use very often. To be weary is to be really tired of something, to just be kind of done with it, right? Have you ever had that experience? Kia right now, I think, is kind of done with the heat, although she likes laying in the sun. We're going to go inside in a few minutes. I've been doing a lot of gardening lately, and with a lot of my gardening, there are things, there are jobs that I have to do that are kind of heavy, and I have a hard time doing them by myself. And so I'm going to show you a couple of things here. I've got a planter that I planted right over here. If I was to lift that planter, if I needed to lift it, I would need two hands. But if I needed to lift or move this rock, I would need a lot more help than that. I would be burdened to try to do that by myself. In other words, I really couldn't do it. I would really struggle. And sometimes we have burdens and struggles as well that don't have anything to do with heavy lifting like this. Those burdens and struggles might be that we have um, a relationship with a friend that's not going so well, or that we are having struggles with our reading or our math. Maybe there are struggles in our family that we need um, Jesus' help with. Jesus says, those of you who are weary and those of you who are heavy burdened, come to me, I will give you rest. Jesus won't necessarily take away those things, 
but Jesus will help us to endure them. Jesus will help us to work our way through them, and Jesus will help us to grow and to thrive despite any struggles or burdens or weariness that we might have. And that's a good word for us today, that Jesus is always with us and for us, and that in Jesus there is no struggle or burden that we will ever have that is too difficult for us to endure, to get through. And so let's say a word of prayer and remember that Jesus is always with us and for us, no matter how tired we are and no matter how much we are struggling with something. Let's pray. Dear Jesus, thank you for being with us and for us. Thank you for being our forever friend. Thank you for helping us to carry the burden. And thank you for helping us by sending others to help when the burden is just simply too strong for us to handle alone. And Lord Jesus, we ask that you keep us strong in faith, especially in these days. In Jesus' name, amen. The first lesson is a reading from Zechariah 9, 9-12. A reading from Zechariah. Rejoice greatly, O daughter Zion. Shout aloud, O daughter Jerusalem. Lo, your king comes to you. Triumphant and victorious is he, humble and riding on a donkey, on a colt, the foal of a donkey. He will cut off the chariot from Ephraim and the war horse from Jerusalem, and the battle bow shall be cut off. And he shall command peace to the nations. His dominion shall be from sea to sea and from the river to the ends of the earth. As for you also, because of the blood of my covenant with you, I will set your prisoners free from the waterless pit. Return to your stronghold, O prisoners of hope. Today I declare that I will restore to you double. Word of God, word of life. Thanks be to God. The second reading is from Romans 7, 15 to 25a, a reading from Romans. I do not understand my own actions, for I do not do what I want, but I do the very thing I hate. Now, if I do what I do not want, I agree that the law is good, but in fact, it is no longer I that do it, but sin that dwells within me. For I know that nothing good dwells within me that is in my flesh. I can will what is right, but I cannot do it. For I do not do the good I want, but the evil I do not want is what I do. Now, if I do what I do not want, it is no longer I that do it, but sin that dwells within me. So I find it to be a law that when I want to do what is good, evil lies close at hand. For I delight in the law of God in my inmost self, but I see in my members another law at war with the law of my mind, making me captive to the law of sin that dwells in my members. Wretched person that I am, who will rescue me from this body of death? Thanks be to God through Jesus Christ our Lord. So then with my mind, I am a slave to the law of God, but with my flesh, I am a slave to the law of sin. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Holy, holy, holy is the Lord of hosts. God's, God's glory, glory fills, fills the whole earth. earth. Alleluia. The Holy Gospel according to Matthew, the 11th chapter. Glory, glory to, to you, o Lord. Lord. But to what will I compare this generation? It is like children sitting in the marketplaces and calling to one another, we played the flute for you, and you did not dance. We wailed, and you did not mourn. For John came neither eating nor drinking, and they say, he has a demon. The Son of Man came eating and drinking, and they say, look, a, glunt, a glutton and a drunkard, a friend of tax collectors and sinners. Yet wisdom is vindicated by her deeds. At that time, Jesus said, I thank you, Father, Lord of heaven and earth, because you have hidden these things from the wise and the intelligent and have revealed them to infants. 
Yes, Father, for such was your gracious will. All things have been handed over to me by my Father, and no one knows the Son except the Father, and no one knows the Father except the Son, and anyone to whom the Son chooses to reveal him. Come to me, all you who are weary and carrying heavy burdens, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and humble in heart, and you will find rest for your souls. For my yoke is easy and my burden is light. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, O Christ. Christ. Grace, mercy, and peace to you from God our Father and from our Lord and Savior, Jesus the Christ. Amen. So a few weeks ago, I decided to make some life changes. Nothing too drastic, but some life changes nonetheless. At least so I thought. I decided that I needed to follow a healthier lifestyle, healthier eating habits, a healthier exercise routine. Just, you know, a smarter, healthier way to live and be. So I decided that I really needed to eat more cleanly, eliminate sugar and white flour as much as possible. Those seem to be the things that people target when they uh, decide to uh, go a little cleaner. I rarely drink much soda or soft drinks anyway, and I've been um, avoiding high fructose corn syrup for some time, so I thought, really, this is not gonna be a big deal. It's not going to be too hard. That being said, I have a well-developed sweet tooth. Still, I felt that I was already headed in the right direction, and as far as diet goes, I just needed to tweak a few things here and there. Exercise is certainly another matter in need of more attention. And since it's summer and my schedule these days allows for a little bit more flexibility, I thought, no big deal. I would just get up a little earlier to walk more, add a little biking in the evening here and there. There are certainly lots of beautiful places to be, beautiful walking paths um, around Lancaster County, hiking areas and, and such. And so I thought to myself, what better time to establish a pattern I could follow? And I was doing fairly well with the whole eating healthier business. Then this week arrived. Monday I had to stop at CVS on my way home and Hershey's chocolate with almonds called to me. You know the ones I mean, the little rectangular blocks of chocolate individually wrapped in gold? Well, I bought the bag. I thought, no harm done, I'll just have one on the way home. It's good to give in to our cravings every now and then, they say, right? Otherwise, dieting becomes too much of a chore, too hard to do. And so giving in every now and then will help you stick to your program if you allow yourself that break, so they say. Well, I unwrapped two on the way home and another after I arrived before I managed to hide the bag from view in the cabinet. Every morning I wake up at six o'clock and I think, okay, now is the perfect time to get out and walk while it is nice and cool and quiet. Then I roll over and I doze off again. At seven o'clock I repeat the well-practiced pattern. When at last the clock strikes 7.30, I finally get up and I walk the dog and then I decide I really need to get to work and I don't have time for the lengthier, brisker walk now. I'll do it later. And of course, nowadays, later never comes. We all have those things that we need to improve upon. Perhaps our cravings and addictions are a little more serious. It could be that drugs or alcohol threaten our health and destroy our relationships. Perhaps with the best of intentions, we try to give up smoking or swearing or gambling or gossip, but then temptation takes hold, and before we know it, we're feeling the pull of sin and the weight of guilt. St. Paul addresses this common human reality when he laments, I don't understand my own actions. How many times have I said that to myself? How many times have you? whether it is offering unsolicited advice to our adult children, even though we know better, or staying up too late, or spending too much time in front of the computer or the TV, 
or sacrificing our precious time to social media sites or spending too much money on frivolous things, we get what Paul is saying here. And the thing is, my friends, sin is a part of our lives that repeatedly confounds us in much the same way. As Christians, as disciples of Christ, we vow to walk the walk and talk the talk. But then we find ourselves failing to live up to the teachings and values of our Lord Jesus Christ. We want to be nice because Christians are supposed to be sweet and kind and gentle, but then we harbor thoughts about our neighbors that defy that adjective. We want to be more socially conscious and faithful to the ethic of Jesus Christ, but we continue to exist in our own little bubbles of privilege and self-protection. We want to follow Jesus, but we also want to follow our own desires and comforts that often lead us down the wrong pathways. As St. Paul confronts this reality, he addresses the Roman churches and writes, I know that nothing good dwells within me that is in my flesh. I can will what is right, but I cannot do it. The truth of that statement stings as it strikes us and reflects the reality of our lives. In our world today, we see reflections of the result of our willing but not doing, and we confess its presence in our lives. It permeates our beings and the world around us. And as a result, otherwise reasonable people make horrible decisions. Many of us thoughtlessly engage in activities that risk others, using our freedom as a banner that promotes self-centered living and illustrates our most sinful tendency. Martin Luther called it that tendency, incurvatus se, which are Latin words meaning being turned in on oneself, which, Luther said, is the essence of sin being turned in on ourselves. The truth is that being curved in on oneself cuts us off from the reality that we are creations of God, created to reflect the light of God's love and God's mercy in the world. Being curved in on oneself allows us to deny the worth, equality, and the personhood of the other. Being curved in on oneself makes giving in to temptation easy when the tempter uses his wiles to convince us that we are so much better giving in to the need to puff ourselves up or make ourselves happy even at the expense of others or hold on to power and greed at the expense of others whose freedom, lives, and well-being we deem less, were of less worth or importance as our own. Knowing this, God sent the Jesus into the world to embody his mercy, grace, and love. Not, as Jesus says, to condemn the world, but to show forth God's glory and love, to be for the world a savior, saving us from our own self-destructive ways for the sake of the kingdom of God. We follow Jesus Christ because he gives us hope. Hope that sin will not defeat us. Hope that while we do at times give in to the temptations far more serious than that piece of chocolate or three, or our lazy tendencies to sit rather than move, belonging to Jesus means something in our lives. Belonging to Jesus shapes our behaviors, our decisions, and our paths. Our discipleship calls us back again and again to a place where we acknowledge our sinfulness and rely not on ourselves. After all, Paul's confession here and ours is that we are powerless against sin, that sin is a powerful and deadly force against which we are helpless but by the grace of God. Rather, we rely solely on the love and grace of God to free us from sin's fearful hold on us. The fact is, 
as Paul acknowledges with boldness and clarity. While we would much rather pat ourselves on the back because we are pious, decent people, insidious sin enslaves us daily with a cosmic power that afflicts and deforms us as we fight to protect our individual rights and freedoms while denying our brothers. As a result, we humans face alienation, deformation, damnation, and death. Paul's words give us a place to begin facing the truth of our situation, loosing the power that sin has over our lives. We need Jesus to save us from our sins. We will always need Jesus to save us from our sins. Following Jesus, living lives that reflect his light in our lives, living as disciples of Jesus doesn't negate the truth, but embraces it. We do and always will need Jesus to lift us from the power of sin. And indeed, Jesus comes forth. Jesus comes forth to us in our daily lives when we pray to him, rely on him, and ask him for help. Where this all leads us is to a place wherein we can acknowledge that, as we say in Luther speak, we are simultaneously saints and sinners, fallen and forgiven, enslaved and freed by the blood of Christ. In the gospel, Jesus describes children who routinely miss what is going on right in front of them. They don't know when to play or mourn or sing or dance, sit quietly or join in. We claim to be wise and discerning, but we don't always recognize the divine in our lives. We don't always recognize God's movement, God's presence, and God's voice that we need most to hear. God is always too much or too little for us, too severe or too generous, too demanding or too provocative. On our own, we have little capacity to discern what is good and right and holy and true. And so Jesus offers us comfort. Come to me, all you who are weary and carrying heavy burdens, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you. Learn from me, <clears throat> for I am gentle and I am humble of heart. And you, you will find rest for your souls. This weekend, this Independence Day weekend, is a perfect time for us to contemplate these words of Jesus, that our freedom, our rest, comes in him and from him. Jesus reaches out to the burdened ones, the ones who try to resist that piece of chocolate on their own and realize they just can't do it alone. Jesus offers kind rest, strength, grace, and forgiveness, and he rescues us from the weariness and the burdens of our feeble struggles, of all the burdens we have to carry. It turns out that the only one that Jesus gives us is light enough and worthy enough and restful enough for us to bear, to follow him, to seek him, to love him, to come to him. Amen.
whole church on earth, let us confess our faith using the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father, the Father Almighty, Almighty, Creator of heaven, heaven and earth. earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the, the communion, communion of saints, saints the, the forgiveness of sins, sins the, the resurrection of the body, body and, and the life the everlasting. Amen. Amen. Called into unity with one another and the whole creation, let us pray for our shared world. We pray for the church. Sustain us as we share your word. Embrace us as we struggle to find our common ground. Bind us together in the love we share for our God. Lift up leaders with powerful and prophetic voices. Free us from stagnant faith. Lord, in your mercy, hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. We pray for the well-being of creation. You gave to us an abundance and balance. Yet now we see the imbalance that we ourselves have brought to the planet. We pray for your help to protect the air, water, and land from abuse and pollution. Free us from apathy in our care of creation and direct us towards sustainable living. Lord, in your mercy, hear, hear our prayer. prayer. We pray for the nations as all face the struggle with COVID-19. Guide leaders in developing just policies and guiding difficult conversations. Free us from patriotism that hinders relationship building, even as we celebrate our Independence Day. Lead us to expansive love of our neighbor. Lord, in your mercy, hear, hear our prayer. prayer. We pray for all in need, for all who are tired, feeling despair, sick or oppressed. We pray especially for Rosa, John, Terry, Martha, Linda Stufus and the Amish community, Kirsten, Evelyn, Amy, Gary, Florence, Jan, Harold, Rhonda and her children, Ralph, Karen Brunken and family, Josie, our homebound members, Ada, Wendell, Evelyn, Evelyn, Jim, Mary, Pat, Seth, Mary Lou, Chuck, Michaela. Are there others we should lift in prayer? Take their yoke upon you and ease their burdens. Give your consolation and free us from all that keeps us bound. Lord, in your mercy, hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. We pray for this congregation. Bless pastors, deacons, and congregational leaders. Energize children's ministry volunteers, church administrators, and those who maintain our building. Shine in this place that we might notice your ways, that your love transforms our lives. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. We give thanks for those who have died in faith, especially James Root. Welcome them into your eternal rest and comfort us in our grief until we are joined with them in the new life of our Jesus Christ. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our, hear our prayer. prayer. Receive these prayers, O God, and those too deep for words. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. The peace of Christ be with you. And also with you. 
thanking God for his goodness and generosity to us, we offer up to him his, the gifts that he has first given to us. Take it away, Pastor. our Savior and Lord, to whom with you and the Holy Spirit be honor and glory forever. Amen. Amen. We pray in the words that our Jesus gave us. Our, our Father, Father, who, who art, art in heaven, heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy, thy kingdom come, come thy, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. heaven. Give, give us this day our daily bread, and, and forgive us our trespasses. trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. And now, people of God, receive this blessing. Neither death, nor life, 
nor angels, nor rulers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor powers, nor height, nor depth, nor anything else in all creation will be able to separate us from the love of God in Christ Jesus. Therefore, God, the Creator, Jesus the Christ, and the Holy Spirit, the Comforter, bless you and keep you in eternal love. Amen. Amen. Thanks be to God. God.